Hello! Today I'm going to add some components to this printed circuit board so that I can add some CMOS chips. Um, I'll explain everything as I'm going along but let's just clear some of this stuff away so that I can get uh, closer access to this PCB. So this is the board I'm looking at. It's the internal excitation board. It's got uh, square wave oscillators, a noise source, a VCA and also this chip here which is not fitted. So let's get in a bit closer. So this is an analog switch. It's a 4016 uh, CMOS chip and I want to put it in the socket here. You can see that um, I've put a little link piece here and that links the input audio to the output which then runs across here. Um, I've put it through a little link here and feeding it to this output socket. Um, but it's basically the mix of the two tone generators and the noise source. Now this CMOS chip, um, CD4016, quad bilateral analog switch. Um, I think the original versions of CMOS only took up to 15 volts uh, between well, VDD and VSS it would be, wouldn't it, for CMOS? Um, but the later ones could take 20 volts. Now, the power supply for this board and for all these op amps is plus 12, zero, minus 12. So you've got 24 volts across these outer two pins. That's too much for this chip, even in its modern 20 volt variant. So what they've done here is they've put two Zener diodes in here and two resistors and that creates a voltage regular a voltage regulator on the plus 12 volts down to plus 7 volts and on the minus 12 volts it takes it down to minus 7 volts so you've got 707 which is 14 volts just shy of the 15 volts that this chip would take so on the original schematic from 1980 Here's the little pair of regulators. So here's plus 12 volts, here's minus 12 volts, here's ground. Current flows from plus 12 volts back the wrong way through the Zener diode. That's how Zener diodes work. 5.1 volts is dropped across there. Um, and the current flows down to ground through this 1K resistor. So you've got 7 volts across a 1k resistor that's 7 milliamps flowing backwards through this diode and down to ground that creates 7 volts regulated by the diode um, at this point here and the reverse is true as well although everything's back to front so current is actually flowing from ground through the resistor again through the diode back to front but you end up with minus 7 volts at this point here so I need to fit these two uh, Zener diodes, which I have here, 5.1 volt Zener diode, 500 milliwatt. And the two 1K resistors, which are these. So let's put these bits into the board and see if I can measure plus and minus seven volts, um, you know, at the connection between the diode and the resistor, which I believe is there. Of course my connections are underneath. Yeah so Zener diode resistor connection is basically these two points here connected together these two points here. Well let's get the components in and see if that's working. Right got my two I think they're BZX56C I think that's what they are. So black band pointing to band on here I assume that's the right way around. One goes in that way around, the other one goes in t'other way around. So I'll solder those in and then I'll put the two 1K resistors in. Right, there are my two 5.1 volt Zener diodes. Now I'm going to put my two 1K resistors in and then we'll measure voltage. See if the, these are working as voltage regulators. Right, so here's my 12012 power supply. Now there's a little board here. Might be able to it's blue tacked down, but yeah, you can see it there. It's just um I'm putting five volts in from a supercapacitor and I get 12.012 out and there are a couple of little switch mode chips there. I don't 
think I recognised the numbers on those chips when I saw them. I can come back to that if anyone's interested. I've got another one of these boards, actually, I found the other day. Um, but anyway, I've got 12012 on here. So I'll plug that into here. The capacitor's flashing, so it's got some voltage on it. But let's plug that into this. And I'll switch on the thing that's charging the supercapacitor. So this goes up to the full 12012. Right, can we see the DVM? I think we can. Um, okay, so I want to measure... Um, but I don't want my probes slipping, so I'm going to put them in holes. I know that's ground there. This, I think, is positive. 6.62. Uh, the super cap's not up to 5 volts yet, so that might increase, but 6.62. And let's try the opposite pin, which should be minus 6.66. So they're a bit low, but it might be because the 12 volts are low. I'll wait until the 5 volts on the other side of this thing is fully up to 5 volts and we'll have another look. Now, strangely, although this regulator down to plus 7 volts and minus 7 volts is on this page and this little notification VSS to plus 7, well, that's wrong for a start. It's VDD to plus 7, VSS to minus 7 doesn't relate to this page at all. It relates to something right down here. So here, here's the analog switch. Here's the CD4016. This is the mix of sounds coming through to the vocoder. So normally this switch is on, but periodically it will switch over to this switch being on, which is just noise. So if you say she sells seashells, then this switch will go eh, 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 eh for the sibilant sounds to force noise through here and mute what's on there. This circuit with these two transistors has one of these switches on at one time and the other one off and vice versa. So this is inverters. Now, when I put this chip in, the gate inputs, and these are MOSFET gate inputs, I assume, because it's CMOS, will be floating. So I might be able to encourage the switches to be on or off. I don't think it matters that the two outputs are connected together because these have an on resistance of 280 ohms. So the inputs can be wildly different and the outputs connected together. Even if both of these switches on, it shouldn't damage the chip. So let's put the chip in and well, I'll check those voltages again and then put the chip in. Right, so ground to my known ground point. My V plus for the... CMOS chip is 6.62, that hasn't really changed. My V minus is 6.68. So those are differences in the um, Zener diode voltages, possibly current, because Zener diodes don't have a sharp cutoff. There will be a, a variation. Yeah, anyway, those are my voltages. They look fine and I should be okay to plug one of these chips in hot as it were with voltage on the board because there's nothing else around there so let's do that right that's millivolts no um okay so let's get this chip i've just bent the legs in i think i've slightly overdone it actually let's see if i can get that into there now is that pin one yes there's a dot on there oh i've slightly overdone the bending of these legs Let's try again. I think that's the right way around. Um, let's just feel the chip. It's warm because I've been handling it. Now there should be some sound coming out of here. So I'll just plug that into a speaker. And yes, there is noise coming through here. And there should be tone. Ooh, ah, the wrong switch is on. Now can I dab these connections? Yeah, you see, I can't really... Oh, perhaps that's it. I want the other switch on. How do I do that? I need to put positive on the gate input. Yeah, that's not really... <laughs> that's not really working. Let's go back to the circuitry. Oh, some noise has broken through. How interesting. Right, so bits of this circuitry to ensure that this switch is on 
and this switch is not on uh, would be that 10k resistor pulling this gate up to plus 7 volts. So I need R44 10k resistor. Now, of course, it isn't R44 on my board because I changed all the numbers, but it's from 7 uh, volts to pin, oh, is that 5? I think that's 5. Yeah, pin five. And if I want to turn this switch off, then I need to pull this control signal line. It's a gate of a MOSFET. Pull it down. Well, now there's a 1K5 resistor and an LED. I could just probably put a link in. Oh, I don't know. Actually, yes, I probably could just put a link in there temporarily. Let's try getting a 10K resistor at least in there to start with. Of course, it's just occurred to me that I can just put the 10K in loose without soldering it because it is just CMOS. There's no current involved or very little. So let's plug in that. Let's plug in some audio. Either one of these doesn't really matter because it's a stereo speaker. Uh, switch the speaker on. Oh, and I'm getting tone through now. Why is that showing up as noise? Oh, I think I'm getting both sources. So let's put this 10K resistor in because that will turn on one of the switches. Now, because I can't put that down, can I? No, not really. And let's put in another resistor. Um, do I want to turn the other one off? I suppose I do, really. Noise is coming through. But so is noise breaking through the other switch. So I think both switches are on at the moment. Because when I do that, I get both the tone and the noise. Let's turn the other one off. I'll find that 1K5 resistor. Um, well, I'm just using another 10K resistor at the moment because I can't find any 1K5s. I'm not going to solder these in. Okay, so tone is coming through. And I can have two tones. Oh! So those are the two tones together. And noise will come through if I do it on this part. So that's all fine. If I take this resistor out and sort of try and put some positive on there, I can get the other one to turn on. But what I really need to do here is build this entire circuit and then I can actually get the switch to work as it's meant to, which is kind of a, um, a double throw switch. It'll either be one source is connected or the other source is connected. So it would be quite good to get that um, flipping properly. Um, oh yes, the noise is breaking through now. And so if I turn the tone up, I get both tone and noise coming up uh, because the noise is VCA'd so that it matches the level of the tone. And that is working. But yeah, I need to get some more components into this so that it behaves as normal. But I think I'll leave it there for this video because all I wanted to do was get my uh, 707 power supply or 6.6 .6 as it's measuring to get this CMOS chip powered up and it is powered up and it's working. I think I'll solder that resistor in now so that I've got my uh, switch passing through to this link and out to this socket so that I can hear the output that is going through this chip. Yeah, that'll do for this video. So cheerio.